Oh, yeah, well, you know, uh, Ellison and Star Riders, I've always known they were very, uh, you know, oh, yeah, they, they, were, they were obviously very strong, but just very high, very high skill ceiling, uh, high skill ceiling, high skill floor, you know. Uh, I knew it, though. I knew they were strong. I knew they were strong, uh, but, you know, uh, I, I knew it. So, uh, yeah, sure you did, guys. Sure you did. Hello everybody, it's Glass Half Dead here, and today, hopefully you can tell for the thumbnail, I am doing a very quick little brief overview of the Nova that is currently occurring, Kill Team Placements. So at this point in time, the first three games that gives everybody a seed have occurred, and tomorrow, what's going to happen is we get the, um, all of the pods are made up of eight people, so where you are seeded, or where you were seeded in the first three games that you played, depends your pod in the semi-finals, I guess that's what it would be called, of eight people, and each game is a best of three, I think. It's a little bit complicated. But, what this means for us, is that basically where you ended up today, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you were in top eight, you go into the championship bracket and that means you have a chance of coming first overall and then uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 are going to be in the second champion, uh, bracket. So if you come second, or no, so if you come first in the second bracket, you would actually be coming eighth. However, you will still get a, a trophy of some sort because you came first in your bracket. However, what we really care about, if, if you want to be a dick, the way I just said that, uh, is who comes first in the championship pod. So all I'm really going to be doing here is running down the factions and any of the players that we know, uh, because that's a bit of fun, really, isn't it? And so we could see, we could see, we we'll see if we can make up some ideas and say some things about what we see. So first things first, the top player is Eric with Tau. Now we've had Eric on the channel. I think at the time he was mainly Drakari, but he had played some Tau at the time. So that's cool. So tower number one. Now, for anybody unaware and hasn't already seen Birnid's video on the subject, Tau actually didn't do brilliantly in the first two days of Nova, which is a bit surprising. Azurani were really dominating. But obviously Tau have now come on top with, I don't want to be weird, but 69 points. I'm just saying. Okay, then we have Chuck. Now, we just had an interview with Chuck. Literally, that's the last video I put up. Where he was, we know him as Necron Chuck, but he's taking Tyranids. Which, for anybody that watched that interview, you will know that he was deliberately wanting to take a list that is meta and actually has a chance of winning. And he's done that, and he's come second. You know, he's the number two seed, so presumably he's going to be against Eric in you know round one. So that's that's pretty cool. Then we have Alex. Alex, I can't say his neck second name. It's going to be French, isn't it? Uh, Torbert. Ah, we oui, uh, Alex Torbert. Uh, with Orcs. Uh, Alex, if you don't know, is Kill Team Academy. We've had him on uh, twice now. Orcs. Orcs being seed number three. That's pretty cool. However, saying that Orcs are number three means I should probably talk about Open and Arena, shouldn't I? So the way Nova is doing Open and Arena is um, they alternate. There you go. They alternate. And I believe what they did was they did game one, game two, and then game three was actually a best of three. I was, I'm a little hazy on, on the rules, basically. But game three, I know, was done in an arena board. So, so that obviously is going to swing things. And the way they did it was they did exactly the same mission three times, as opposed to, you know, swapping between the best of three. It would have been cool if they had swapped for the best of three. I think that would have been much better, actually. But from logistically, that, that would be a nightmare. So I understand why they didn't. Cool. Then we have William Blood with Heretic Astartes. Very apt second name to be playing Heretic Astartes. We don't know him at all. He's not in the Discord. But uh, good job, Will. So Heretic Astartes uh, at fourth. We Oh, so, okay. So the other thing is, because we don't have the finals yet, and because... Uh, Nova isn't policing people uploading their rosters to the app, particularly. We're a little bit hazy on what everybody is actually running, so I'm not going to be talking about people's actual lists today. That's all going to come in a later video, once hopefully my Discord has done some sleuthing, and we can actually 
tie some things down. What we do know about the Heretic Astartes is they're running two Corn Berserkers. Uh, there you go. I'm not saying they're not running anything else, but they are running two Corn Berserkers. Cool. I don't know what Chuck's running. I don't know what Alex is running. I don't know what Eric is running. Five, six, seven, eight. This is the rest of the championship pod now. We've got Drakari Demons with from, from old George there, Warp Charge Gaming. We've had him on, and obviously he has his own channel. Check him out. He's going to be putting up all of his um all of his videos uh from his all of his games up onto his channel. Uh I he's just mentioned in my Discord that for the Discord, he's going to put up unedited footage. So it's just going to be all the background cursing and screaming at dice and noise um, and he's going to put those as private links into my discord um, but then eventually he's going to release proper footage uh, for the rest of his channel uh, publicly so if you do want to see unedited footage of that kind of stuff jump into my discord here post them somewhere that'd be awesome um, okay then we've got tyranids and necrons uh, so, do we have any doubles there? So we've got two, two Tyranids, two Tyranids, but otherwise, a nice mixed field, pretty good. Okay, and so that is our championship bracket, that's who, who could, is going to legitimately come first, second and third for the whole of Nova, is right there. Pretty cool, do we have any thoughts on that? We know Tau is strong. We know Tau is strong. Ooh. You know, honestly, I think it comes down to whether they start on Arena, then do Open and then finish on Arena, or if they start on Open, then do Arena and finish on Open. Because, you know, Orcs, super strong in Arena. I've, I, still, I still stick to that argument. In Open, they're not quite as good. And obviously, you know, a, a top player can make Orcs win in open and can probably do it reliably. I can't do that, but good for them. When you're up against the other top eight players, possibly in, you know, North America, it's like, well, you know, that's going to be tough. I'll be really, really surprised if Alex pulls this one out of it and, and manages to come first. But that'd be really awesome if he did. Um, I don't know what his list is at all. I don't know what he's running. I believe the current meta after elites is that you take a few more knobs than you typically did when before when uh, in core when you could only take two, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, demons, demons seem strong, but honestly, I don't know enough to really say. Now I know that George had done pretty well in previous pods. He's dropped to sixth now, although saying dropped to sixth. Uh, that's not really much, I mean, that's so much strength of schedule, to be honest. Like, that's not a big deal. So, really, anybody here could take it. be very interesting to see if Necrons do it. Especially if Necrons beat Chuck. That would be a little bit ironic, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, I'm not saying I want them to, I'm just saying. Okay. Who else do we have? Now we have, at number nine, we have... Uh, so, this is the uh, second bracket we're looking through now. So we've got Sheldon here. We Again, we just had an interview with him last week. He's taking Azrani. Although his T name is Maynark Dynasty. So he's obviously still in the Necron mindset. Which is a little bit weird, but okay. Then we've got Orcs again. We've got Azrani again. Uh, from uh, Janice there. Who's just joined the Discord recently. So that's cool. So we're getting the inside scoop on what she was running. The reason that's interesting is because in... I think the first pod... The first game that they played, first day, uh, she dominated everybody else with her Azurani. Interestingly, she also has a Wraithblade on her list, which is pretty interesting. Like, because they're only playing at 100 points, and to take a, you know, 45-point model at that is pretty terrifying. But she did, and she won when she took that, so that's cool. Uh, we've got Gellapox, so that's our first Gellapox on the list. Oh, hold on now. Am I... So interestingly, there are no Azurani in the top eight. It's always tough to know how much of this is actual strength of schedule, and maybe one of those Azurani is now going to dominate and should be in the top eight, but they haven't made it. They haven't made it, so that's that's quite interesting. As everyone is currently considering Azurani as kind of one of the top teams almost. 
Anyway, uh, then we've got Death Watch. That's cool to see Death Watch up, up there. Thousand Sons. Interesting. Gene Steeler Cults. Astra Militarum. Now, what are, what are we seeing there? So, Thousand Sons. I'll be interested to know what his list is. Purely because I think a lot of people aren't playing Thousand Sons at the moment. Um, especially at 100 points. Because at 100 points, they basically didn't get anything from Elites. Because... So th this is why I would be interested to know what his list is. Is he actually running a Terminator Sorcerer? So that he's getting the double Cybolts. Because if you're getting the double Cybolts, then technically you you did get something from Elites. If you're not doing that, you literally got nothing in the Elites book. Now, Thousand Suns were still strong. They still had some interesting options. Um, certainly in Arena, their Zangles could really swarm up. And Zangles are potentially quite tough. You know, T4, 5-up in Vong. But... Yeah, it'd be interesting to know if he's taking the second Sorcerer. We have our first Gene Stealer Cults and our first Astro Militarum there. Now, some people may be aware in previous videos that I have claimed that Gene Stealer Cults are the, the, the worst faction. Unfortunately, one of my Discord people, Matt H, uh, won um, <laughs> the previous day with Gene Stealer Cults. Ru very rudely, I feel taking me, my ability to say that away, so I can no longer say that anymore. But at least we, we've get them in the second pod, and Astro Militarum. I think, from what I have played of Astro Militarum, Astro Militarum are very strong. I'm actually surprised to see them so far down. Or does that may sound? There you go. Uh, and Death Watcher up there. Be interesting to know what the Death Watch list is. Is it just, you know, three frags in Furnace Heavy Bolter, as Beerin says, uh, for that little engine. Don't know. Let's see. Okay. Here we see the, th the third pod. Now, Jason Pease is a guy from the Discord. So we know what's happening there. He's giving us some good info. With Tyranids. Then another Tyranids. Oh, are there any repeats in the second pod, actually? Sorry. So we've got two Azurani. But that's it. Everybody else is a unique faction. Okay. Third pod. Tyranids. Tyranids. Grey Knights. Tyranids. Death Guard, Tyranids, Grey Knights, Orcs. Hmm, okay. So, is that... That's four Tyranids, two Grey Knights. That's an interesting pod. So, Death Guard are strong. I, this is also the first Death Guard we've seen. I'm surprised they're so far down. Death Guard's a strong faction. Also note, I believe this is the, this is only the second... Or is this the, the third Orcs? Oh, okay. This is the third orc we've seen. So far, we have one orc player in each pod. That's... That's kind of... Probably... How each faction should end up. Like, you know, if the game was balanced, it should be one faction ends up in each pod, showing that, depending on the player and strength of schedule, etc., they can be the best. Or they can be the middle, or they can be the worst. Um... So Orcs actually kind of representing perfect balance in the game at the moment, which is a little bit weird. Tyranids are everywhere, though. Um, yeah, two Grey Knights, unfortunately, coming in the third pod. Nothing stronger than that. Death Guard, don't know why they're only in third pod. Bit odd. Um, anything else there? That's all That's all there is to say, because there's nothing else to, to talk about there. I will say, because there are four Tyranids here, I just want to quickly... Say my little piece about Tyranids. I think Tyranids are a brilliant faction. Um, whether you want to dominate the enemy or have a fun time, I think Tyranids are honestly the best faction for that. You can go all big bugs and be fluffy if you want and just take, you know, like four lictors. Or you can go lots of little swarm things and you can build that swarm in, in like so many different varieties as well. I actually think... Tyranids are such a good army from a fluff perspective. Like, and from a having fun perspective. I almost think, like, it's it's almost a shame that they're so good. Like, that they're, they're so good competitively because they are so good from a fluff gameplay perspective. There's so much to learn about list building. Like, if you're a beginner... And if you're competitive, so if you're a beginner, uh, you've got some really basic choices. You could just say, oh, well, I don't really know what to take. I'll take a few of these little guys. 
um, and I'll take um, a lictor because that way none of your guys have any options. You don't really have to think about what you're taking much. Or you can get really into it. You can say, oh, yes, well, I'm going to take uh, some termagants with the uh, death spitter. And then I'm also going to take uh, a gene stealer with X and Y. And then I'm going to take a uh, warrior with blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to take some raveners because uh, raveners. Yeah, I, I actually think Tyranids are one of the best factions just in every sense um obviously we we already know they're competitive but from just a just from a teaching someone to play the game you if you ha already have a tyranid army for example you have you have the entire breadth of kill team right there like you don't need anything else to get the full experience anyway let's move on uh, so this here is the fourth pod now, and I believe the final one, yes. So we've got Heretic Astartes. Notice this is only the second Heretic Astartes, and the other one is right at the top. Uh, you know, the fourth player, so that's cool. Astro Militarum, again, only the second, I believe, and he's come pr pretty low. And notice here, Adeptus Astartes, this is the first one we've seen. Now, we don't know what... Uh, sub-faction he's running and then we have our second Adeptus Astartes yep then we have Admech that's our first Admech player Demons and another Adeptus Astartes now for those of you unaware this has to be uh, you know pointed out Nova for honestly no reason has said the Death Denied is going to cost 3 CP at their event and I think it's pretty clear right not to be a dick but Fuck them. What are they thinking? Right? They've literally just come along and said, Oh, well, I don't like this rule, so uh, I'm going to nerf it. Uh, with no data to back up that statement at all. Games Workshop didn't do it in their FAQ. They've just come and said, Oh, idiots. So they removed Death Denied effectively for the game. Like, they may as well have. And that has meant that the only Adeptus of Starty's lists are in the... And all three of them, that's huge. That's huge, and that was a direct result of people not knowing the game that they play test. Uh, Admech, I'm surprised to see Admech so far down. Ignore that. Uh, purely because, for those of you that have watched Byronid's um, Admech chat, he said they were strong. And they're not. They are not. Uh, so I've played some Admech, and I find that they are very swingy. And maybe old Patrick here just had the wrong swing that day. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? I don't. I don't. Obviously, I haven't seen any of these games actually be played. I haven't met any of these people. I don't know. Uh, Heretic Astartes. We've only got two. Astro Militarum. Again, this is the final pod. So it's a bit of a shame to see them so low. I would have liked to have seen them <clears throat> a little bit better represented for Nova, for, for some data, because I feel that some people are going to look at this and say, oh, well, there were only two Astro Militarum, they were both in the lower tiers there, so they're probably a weak faction. I don't think they are, if I'm honest. But there we go, but there we go. And so that, everybody, is all of Nova. Which lists haven't we seen? So I believe... Oh, okay, so there's no Crute. Okay. There's no Elysidian Star Striders, although there's a note on that. Uh, and there's no Harlequins, which is interesting. So, there's no crew. That doesn't surprise anybody, does it? Oh, also, actually, while we're here, let's have a quick check. There is a single towel player. Throughout all 32, throughout all 31 people, there was a single towel player. That's actually really weird. Yeah, I'm surprised about that. I would have expected to see more Tau. I think Tau are very popular. Anyway, before I get into a rant about Tau, let's keep going. So, there's no Harlequins. There's no Crute. I don't think anybody expected to see Crute, so that makes sense. That's fine. Uh, there's... No Elysidian Star Striders. Now, 
as I'm sure you've seen Beardy's video from yesterday, uh, Ellie City's Star Striders actually managed to come first in a previous day. Which, yeah, was madness, right? Uh, they were piloted by... I can't see him in the top here. They were piloted by uh, Matt H, I believe, from my Discord there. And that's crazy. He did a great, great job there. Um, because, you know, oh, that's just everybody. So when I did my This is the Worst Kill Team video, everybody came back and said either Star Striders or Croot were the worst kill team. And this guy just comes out of nowhere and says, oh, actually, I'm going to um, win the entire day and beat everybody. And everybody's like, oh, right. Okay. Whoops. And then, I'm just going to say this, out of the woodwork on my Discord, lots of people suddenly just come up and say, oh, yeah, well, you know, uh, Ellison and Star Striders, I've always known they were very, uh, you know, oh, yeah, like, they, they, were, they were obviously very strong, but just very high, very high skill ceiling, uh, high skill ceiling, high skill floor, you know. Uh, I knew it, though. I knew they were strong. I knew they were strong. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I knew it. So, uh, yeah, sure you did, guys. Sure you did. But I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome that somebody came on and said, uh, you know what? Maybe this game actually is balanced and any, any, anyone can win. Not anyone, any faction could win. You know, depending who's piloting it. That's really awesome. Um, I will say my own experience with the Star Striders is I don't know any of their rules. I can't be bothered to dig out the Rogue Trader book. To find out what those rules are again. In fact, if I was going to, I'd probably just re-watch my old video of the unboxing of them. Um, and then, I have played against them once. I was Orcs. So this was ages ago, like when they first released. I was Orcs. They shot me off the board, effectively. And when I got into combat, I got my Commando Knob into combat with Nosso Prond, who is the, um, the Zealot specialist from their list. And the and I remember I fluffed the roll completely, so I did nothing to her. Or I gave her a flesh wound, maybe? Yeah, and then she just wrecked me. So, although I had never... So, although my experience of them was they, they wiped the floor with me, the player that I played is also a player that regularly beats me and is a better player than me in general. So, I just assumed, you know, the pilot beat me. As opposed to the faction. I didn't really know the faction's rules. So there you go. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Now, hopefully, after... Oh, Harlequins. There were no Harlequins. Uh, that's weird. I'm really surprised there were no Harlequins. Harlequins, everybody considers Harlequins a strong faction. However, I am seeing more and more on my Discord people saying, Oh, actually, you know, Harlequins aren't that strong anymore after Elites. Um, and, you know, they were kind of one of the losers in Elites. I think that's that's weird. I didn't know that. Like, I know they didn't get any new units. And perhaps they didn't get the best sub-factions. But they are still such a unique style of play, thanks to their 3D6 and their flip belts, that they are still a list that... I believe other f uh, uh, other lists can either beat or not beat. And it's kind of... That sounds weird to say, doesn't it? You either have a counter to Harlequins or you are going to get wiped by Harlequins. Because you just can't do anything. So Harlequins have really hard matchups against, for example, Grey Knights. Thousand Suns. Anything that can deal some mortal wounds, Harlequins just die. Interesting. Interesting is all I'm saying, that there were no Harlequins... Because with their with their big movement, and they do have a sub faction that allows them to turn their pistols into assaults, so you can, if you want, effectively be charging, uh, advancing every turn and still shooting. Although that's not really how Harlequins play; they are chargers. They're close combat. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so here we have all of the Nova rankings so far. Going into day two, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, grab whoever the winners are and see if they want to do interviews, how they got there. That'd be awesome. And also, hopefully, my Discord, uh, I can manage to grab a few people um, and, and find out rosters of what, you know, the, the winners actually took. And then hopefully... 
do a slightly more in-depth analysis. I know that Beer and Eat is obviously going to do one, but I'm hoping to do... Obviously, we have a slightly different format style, and I'm hoping that in mine, what I can actually do is put up each roster, discuss it, try and figure out why they took what they took, you know, whether it was a mind game or, or what, whereas I know that Beer and Eat has a bit more of a generic image in the background while he discusses it. Uh, hopefully I can do something a bit more visual because of course I have slightly more longer form content as this video is showing. This was meant to be a 10 minute one second video. What the hell happened? Anyway, um, obviously I've mentioned my Discord a lot. I don't link to my Discord anymore because actually the way the YouTube algorithm works is if you click on the Discord link and you go to and you leave YouTube to go to my Discord, that counts as people being disengaged with my video, and so YouTube doesn't push my video to anyone, so nobody ends up watching the fucking video, because fuck YouTube, and, oh, that's gonna get me demonetized, isn't it? Ah, well, what you gonna do? Um, and, and so... That's why I don't link to my Discord anymore in my videos, for anybody questioning that. Uh, however, for this one, because I've mentioned it so much, it would be a bit of a dick move to not link to my Discord. So, in my in my, in my top comment, I am going to have a link to the Discord. Uh, feel free to come along. Uh, it is currently... I'm not trying to big up my Discord. But I'm trying to big up the people in my Discord. Um, it is currently the only place to discuss Nova. Uh, you know, this is the, and this is going to be something that I do for every big tournament. Uh, it, in my Discord channel, it's currently called Nova. Uh, but when uh, SoCal comes around, I'm gonna just gonna, I'm not gonna delete that channel or start a new one. I'm just gonna change the name of no the Nova channel to be SoCal, and it's a great way for people that are at the event to meet up with other people at the Discord. Um, so it's an instant way to generate, you know, people you know, friends. And say, hey, I'm at this event, let's meet up. Um, and then, obviously, people are now spamming the hell out of that, saying, how did you do it? How did you win? I'm so confused. Um, and asking uh, for, you know, rosters, pictures of the event, you can't find anywhere else, etc., all of that. Obviously, nothing to do with me at all, really. Um, but it is to do with all of the people there. So, if you want to join the Discord, it is currently the only place that is talking about literally up to the minute Nova results um, above anywhere else, Facebook, Reddit, um, other discords, etc. So click on the link if you want to do that. But if you could, if you could, you know, right click the link and do open a new tab just so that you're not actually leaving YouTube, that'd be awesome because otherwise nobody's going to see this video. All right. Anyway, this is Big Glass Half Dead. I, I'm really excited to do a full rundown of the final Nova results. Um, I have no idea. Oh, no, we should do predictions. We should do predictions. Okay, okay. Oh, it's a tough one. I'm going to guess first, second, third. Okay, so we've got Tau, Tyranids, Orcs, Heretic Astartes, Drakari, Demons, Tyranids again, Necrons. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, man. Okay, right, let's think. Let's think. And I'm not guessing faction, I'm guessing player. So, otherwise, I would definitely just guess Tyranids, because one of them's going to do it, aren't they? So, I am going to put that as a generic one, though. Top three, we're going to have one of the Tyranids players. Gosh, I don't know, though. I think Tau are strong. Do notice here, though, that although... Uh, Alex there with Orcs didn't get as many wins. He does have the most VP of anyone. So I think he's going to be top three. I think we could get Orcs top three. Ah, oh, but then it does depend. It does depend heavily on whether they're doing open arena open or if they're doing arena open arena. Oh, I've set myself an impossible task here, haven't I? I've been a... Oh, my life is a mistake. What am I doing? Okay. Okay, I'm not going to do one, two, three. But I am going to say top three, somewhere in some configuration, are going to be demons. Oh, but I just said orcs. Oh, man. 
I think demons are strong, but I don't know well enough how they actually play. So, <clears throat> so I'm not going to say demons. I'm not going to say demons. You know what? I kind of just want to say already as is. I think Tau, Tyranids and Orcs. And I think they're going to mix it up in some way. I don't think they will be as they currently are. But, okay. That is such a cop-out answer. <laughs> I think the top three are going to be Tau, Tyranids and Orcs as they currently are. But in a different way, in a different format. I don't know. There you go. Well, that was crap, wasn't it? Sorry about that crapness, guys. Anyway, if you've actually stayed around to the end of this video, I assume it's because you're painting. Uh, I hope you've done an awesome little little bit of hobby there. Um, if not, I'm on the second monitor. Hi guys. Hi second mo hi second monitor squad fam. How's it going? What do you think? Tell me. Tell me everything. Uh, I'm really I I'm I'm having so much fun at the moment in my Discord. Uh, I'm not talking that much, but I am checking all of the messages. Um, unfortunately, they all happen between like midnight and 5 a.m. That's when all the results come in uh, for me because I'm in the UK, obviously. Uh, but I'm having great fun in the morning just reading through them all, seeing what's happened, and being able to say, oh, yay, cool. So, yeah. Anyway, this will be Glass Half Dead. Join my Discord if you want to keep up with this stuff in real time. Otherwise, I'm going to be covering it. Beerenid's going to be covering it. Warp Charge Gaming is going to be um, doing his raw uncut footage in my Discord. Or you could wait a little bit longer and he'll do his edited, nicely edited, voiceovered sections um, in his own, on his, on his own channel. So check everything out. Anyway, uh, there's a big glass half dead. I'm talking for way too long on what I thought was going to be a 10 minute video. I thought I was going to struggle to get 10 minutes, honestly. Um, <clears throat> glass half dead. I hope you've had a good day. I hope you continue to have a good day. Goodbye.